All right, I'm back. I know it's been a couple weeks. I know I've had just a ton of people saying, how does it work? How does it work? How does it work? And, uh, you know, full disclosure, like I said before, this was sent to me. Um, I did not pay for it. It is a beta unit. There are a lot of things, as I've said before, that will be different. Uh, this is all 3D printed. The, the finished version is supposed to be injection molded. Uh, there'll be various colors. Uh, the programming is still being worked on. He's fine-tuning it. I've been doing a ton of testing. Second disclosure, there's stuff I just can't talk about right now that I am testing for him that is um, not necessarily proprietary, but testing in a proprietary way for him. Uh, so please understand that I'm trying to do my best to balance both sides of this. Uh, I'm extremely happy and, and pretty honored that I get to test this thing out. And I have put a ton of rounds over it uh, in the last few weeks. Starting out, I'm not going to lie, it was a little rough because I'm so used to like my magneto speed and my lab radar. And, you know, you kind of, you know, you kind of forget the growing pains with both of those as well. This definitely had a little bit of a learning curve, but that learning curve is also tied to the fact that it is not a finished production model. So I would shoot on it, um, you know, I'd get, re I'd get readings, this and that. I'd talk to him. He'd say, okay, let's try changing this setting and, that, you know, working around it. Um, it's incredibly sensitive. It's really good at picking up shots, um, but he doesn't have the, uh, the actual, like, trigger built for it to isolate picking it up. So it's picking it up based on, uh, you know, pulling the trigger and hearing the bang, uh, which does mean that on rare occasion – if the timing's just right and somebody's a bench or two or five down and shoots, uh, depending on the setting, it's more or less sensitive to that. And it could be like in the middle of a reset uh, while you're shooting. So, you you know, again, you could miss a shot that way. But I will tell you that the trigger he's working on uh, will, you know, obviously pretty much eliminate that. I mean, it, it would have to be like the worst timing ever, uh, but it's no different than, than kind of what we run into with the lab radar sometimes. Uh, functionality wise, let me just talk about this for a minute because the size is one thing, right? Like everybody sees this and goes, oh my God, uh, this thing's amazing, but everybody complains about the screen. And I'm just going to tell you that in all fairness, I don't have a problem with the screen. Uh, you know, I have to remember that like on the lab radar, it's a big unit. The screen is obviously bigger than this, uh, but I don't really use the screen on the lab radar. And when I do, I can read it fine. On this one, I can read it just fine also. Um, the, the screen that he's using, the font that he's using, the color makes a huge difference in terms of his contrast. And I know it's hard with my light on and stuff to see, but um, I have absolutely zero issues reading anything on this screen. I do have good good eyesight. I'm like 2020, 2015, something like that. So take it for what it's worth. But I've had other friends look at it that wear glasses. They don't have a problem with it either. So it's very crisp, very easy to read. Uh, the menu, the way you cycle around through this thing, takes a couple tries to get used to it. But now that I'm used to it, it's super simple. There's basically three configure menus. There's your, your data, there is your configuration, and then there is your target, which would be where you arm it. So on this screen here, you, you arm it using the center button. That white box means, whoop, that white box right there means that you are good to go. If I'm shooting and I want to shoot another string, all I do is hit this little over arrow button, and then it's going to, um, it won't do it because there's no shots on here yet, but if there were shots and I hit this arrow, it would just say create new set. Yes, you hit it. It stays armed. Uh, you don't ever have to come off of that. That does bring me to um, the only thing that you really are going to have to kind of be conscious about, which is battery life. Now, I haven't had to worry about it because it runs off USB-C. I simply plug it into uh, an external battery. I never have an issue. If you're looking at the rechargeable battery that's built in, which, by the way, is completely user replaceable if it wears down. Uh, but you do get about an hour on it. Talking to some of my friends and stuff, um, you know, I think it's easy to kind of poo-poo that. The reality is I haven't had a session at the range that's gone longer than an hour where I've run the batteries down to where it won't work uh, when I was testing that. But just to make sure that everything's going as clear as it can without worrying about that, I do plug it in uh, most of the time when I'm shooting on it just because. I do run it in, in the Wi-Fi mode, which is going to be the most battery draining mode. And, and I want to say that it's about an hour 
of usage. Uh, so if you use it and you forget to charge it, yeah, I could see where, you know, you're not going to get 10 or 12 uses out of this thing, but it's also not designed that way, right? Um, you know, it's designed to be easily plugged into uh, an external battery pack, which is probably how most people are going to use it. Um, other than that, uh, the, the user interface when you're on uh, a pad or your phone it is rock solid. I never lose connection. It's a Wi-Fi connection, just like on the shot marker. Uh, so you're not dealing with any of this Bluetooth garbage uh, that, that I think we've all been plagued with for years of, of having the unit disconnect or any of that kind of stuff. When you're connected to this, you are connected to it. End of story. Uh, currently, the software is still in a beta form, so you're going to see me use it in a, in a way where I have to hit a refresh button. Uh, to bring the score from this, or not the score, but the um, the speed from this over to my pad. And, you know, I'm not trying to hide anything, so I'm just telling you, if you watch my video and you happen to see me tapping the pad every time, it's because it's in a manual refresh mode right now. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know that his goal is to ultimately have it refresh automatically. Uh, but again, I'm beta testing, and I'm just trying to be as transparent as I can about what I'm doing with it. The user manual is insane. I talked about this. I've read it four or five times now. Um, there's stuff in here I just honestly don't understand. There's there's a lot of math. Um, I've I've talked to a couple of computer engineers, friends of mine, and they're like, "Oh, this is awesome that they're, that he's actually being so transparent with all this," even though I don't know what most of it means. But he's super transparent about how he's gaining his data, what his data means, and the fact that. Uh, this unit does not make any corrections in it uh, right now. So it is completely raw data. It is not interpreting. It is not softening. It is not flattening a curve. It is not doing anything like that. I honestly can't tell you what the finished product's going to do because there is something to be said. You know, I will just say current models on the market do have some flattening algorithms built into it so it may not be 100 percent true data but it is a more digestible set of data this gives you very raw data uh, as close to the muzzle as possible rather than taking a data reading downrange and then extrapolating it back to the muzzle um, so i'm going to show you some um you know again i've done a ton of shooting I wanted to make the cleanest video I could um, in terms of like how I had it set up on my gun. I've tried different mounts that he's offered. Uh, these are just the ways that I have found it to work the best, which is straight on my gun or mounted right up on my front rest next to the gun. Because of how this works, you want it as close to center bore as possible. Uh, you know, two feet off of, off of your bore is not going to be as accurate as right down your line. And I have not found that recoil on my 284 has caused any problems with picking up shots once I got it dialed in. There were, like I said, there were some software things where I was working through settings and working with him. Um, but once I got that set up, I haven't had any issues. So uh, take a look here. I'm going to show you. This is me with my brand new uh, CZ457 that I uh, just picked up. I thought it would be great to show you guys what it can do with some 22 long rifle, and then I'm going to show you some shots with my 284. So here is my CZ457 doing a test with um, this stuff here. Uh, so I have my Federal, my SK Match, my Long Ray Match, and my Midas Plus. Uh, I'm showing it to you because it's really hard to see in the video because of the shadows, but I just wanted you to see what ammo I was shooting. Uh, let me go ahead and show you that now. When I'm done with that shooting, I'm gonna show you the target real quick. So uh, here you go. All right, here we go. First uh, first test, this is just uh, Federal Classic 22. It's, I don't know, kind of a, it's not a high velocity, but it's not a low velocity either. So let's just, uh, let's see what we can do with it. It's, uh, I mean, it's not great, but I didn't expect great. It looks like it's probably, uh, uh, shoot, I don't know, one, one and a half inch group at 100 yards here. So, all right, let me get some real ammo in this thing. All right, this is going to be the, uh, now it's hard to see because of the lighting, but this is the SK rifle match. 
And uh, I know that it's not great to switch between ammos on 22, but I don't really have a choice right now. So uh, oh, I might end up shooting a couple groups with this. We'll see here. I know sometimes it takes a few rounds to kind of get the barrel used to the new ammo. So this is considerably show slower. This is like just over a thousand and it's shooting probably six inches lower on my target. So let me dial this one up. All right, let's see what happens here now. Let me, I'm gonna add one more round so I get a three shot group up higher here. All right. Oh yeah, considerably more accurate. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's a much tighter group. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this running. I'm gonna load up. I'm gonna shoot another three shot group here. I like this SK and it's not expensive ammo. If this shoots that good, I'm really dying to try my Midas that I've got over here. All right, let's come down. So let's see, what was this SK? SK, SK match, okay. Uh, that was definitely me. I jerked that one a little bit. Still getting used. This is a uh, quite a transition from what I'm used to. All right. Well, I'll take it. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Well, let me get loaded up with some different ammo, and I'll be back. SK uh, long range match for targets 100 yards and beyond. Well, I'm at 100 yards, so let's see what she does. I have to tell you, I haven't shot a 22 in probably five years. Uh, I understand the addiction now that I have a really nice 22. All right, uh, here we go. This is the long range match. So it's just a little faster. It's opening up a little bit and it's grouping a little bit higher. Huh. Now the regular actually shot better, but I'm gonna shoot another group again. I. Everybody I shoot with that does this a lot says you can't trust the first group with new ammo. I, I don't quite understand it yet. I'm still getting used to this, but let's go ahead and shoot a second group here. See if it tightens up like it did last time. I'll tell you that's really consistent ammo. Oh yeah, that was much better. Much better. All right, well, there's the SK long range match. I'm not gonna do too much shooting because I have an NRL 22 match in a couple days and I don't have any more ammo, so I'm gonna have to kind of use a couple different lots, but I just wanted to get this tested so I knew what it did. All right, well, there's that one. All right, lastly, I've got the uh, Midas Plus. 
Uh, this stuff at roughly 20 bucks a box is supposed to be the absolute whiz bang humperdink here. So uh, let's see what it does. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll shoot two three shot groups just to see. Midas and Midas. All right. That SK long range uh, was really consistent, though. Really consistent. All right, here we go. Uh, you know what? I'm going to move down because there's holes over here. All right. Let's do this. All right. Here goes the Midas. So it's about the same speed as the uh, long range, right about that 1050 mark. First group was good. I can't imagine what this next one's going to do. All right. So that's the warm-up one, and that was that was pretty tight. It was like a little over an inch, probably, from what I'm looking at. That one was considerably slower. Yeah, that one went high. So I had one one low round there. And then two through the same hole. So just for giggles, that's uh. So those last two were exactly the same velocity and they literally went through the same hole. So I'm just kind of curious for fun here. I'm just gonna shoot another one because that first one was like 20 feet per second off and uh, definitely noticed a difference there on impact. But let's just see what this one does. Three in a row at 10:45. That stuff is really consistent and a uh, little tighter. So, all right. Well, hey, that was fun. Uh, I can't wait to go out and shoot this NRL match. So, uh, I've got a bunch more ammo coming, and there's going to be a whole lot of videos uh, on this coming up because I've got a Bergara B14 coming, and I might even pick up a Voodoo here in the near future and, and compare them all. So. But I'll have at least the Bergara and the 457 here. We'll see what happens. Anyway, um, I think that's a really great example of what this chronograph can do. Uh, it's easily picking up all of the shots here. So, hey, anyway, just to give a little context again, you're kind of getting a two for one video here. You're getting to see the chronograph in action. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through my targets real quick. But uh, you can see the Federal here and then the Federal again. Uh, and that, it didn't measure out too bad. Uh, you know, this is 100 yards, which, you know, I'm asking a lot of the gun. Uh, it was actually pretty windy out. We had a, a pretty big storm rolling through. It was probably blowing at least five or six miles an hour. Uh, we're kind of the tail end of the storm. We had a bunch of snow in April, which is crazy. But, um, you know, like my federal group here is roughly, you know, just under an inch. Then I went to the SK match, which came down to, uh, I don't know, roughly 0.85. My other SK match group was about the same, 0.87. And I'm just going real quick here. The SK long range, I, I'm not sure what happened with that shot, but um, total on this was uh, 1.5. And then my second long range. So I kind of wrote off these first ones because like this was breaking, this was getting ammo through it after the Federal and then this was getting it through after the regular SK. You know, I've, I've just heard that's a thing. But either way, my second group was definitely better with the uh, SK long range at about 0.81. And then the Midas here, 
uh, you know, the Midas came down about 0.8 and I can't remember now when I was shooting, I don't know if I jerked this one, but even if I measure that one, it's about the same 0.8. Uh, so, you know, I'm pretty happy with that considering I'm, I'm not a 22 shooter. Uh, in all fairness, it's definitely uh, a big change because I haven't shot anything in probably almost five years, like I said, other than um, my 284 or like a seven mil or something. Um, so anyway, that is the 22. I just thought it'd be kind of interesting for you to see that. Um, now I'm going to do a couple rounds here. You're going to see with my um, 284. So you got to see how the chronograph handled um, 22 caliber. Now we're going to go all the way up to, you know, around 2,700 feet per second with my 284. Uh, the other thing you'll notice real quick, I have it mounted on my gun uh, because I've just found that I like having it on the gun and it would just happen to be how I was testing it. Uh, it does work up on my front rest as well. So again, there's going to be different videos of me using this in different ways and that's because I'm testing it, uh, you know, according to kind of like some ways that he wants me to, to give it a torture test. So here you go. All right, we're going to do a little bit of chrono video while I'm doing a seating depth test. This is 2.423. Now we are on to 2.416. That's tightening up a little bit. All right, well, that's looking pretty good. Let's see what the next one looks like. There we are on 2.412. So the last time I jumped six, no, so about seven, um, I think I'm actually getting close to a compressed load here, so I can't actually seat as deep as I want to, but I am curious what this is gonna do. have a feeling there's a seating depth node between here, but we're going to see. Yep. All right. That's not too bad there. These aren't exactly ideal testing conditions either, so I don't really want to waste a ton of components. I'm just trying to get this thing tuned up a little bit for Tuesday night, and then I can do a little more fine tuning. All right, so uh, I was at 2.416, then I shot 2.412. They're both looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to uh, shoot right in the middle there and just verify. And uh, so we're at 2.414. I'm splitting the difference on those last two. They weren't the absolute tightest, but, um, you know, I'm testing in, in pretty crappy conditions, and um, I really don't feel like wasting components, like I said. We're going to get it as tight as I can for tomorrow night. No, that wasn't good. Huh. Well, sometimes, sometimes that happens. Uh, all right, plan B. I'm going to push the other side of 416 and see what happens here. So, be right back. Low now. So, this will be the last one, and I'll just tune up one of these other loads if this doesn't work for some reason. Oh, no, this is it. No. Oh. All right. So I was just working the wrong side of this thing. All right. That looks fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to do a really fast tuner test on this because uh, what I need to do is 
do this one more time just to validate it and then I'm just going to run a quick tuner test so now I'm going to be a few minutes. I'll be back. All right. So, um uh, we're going to do a tuner test here. So I start I, I always start off my tuner test with zero, which is sort of like a validation load, which is what I'm doing. Um, I felt pretty good about it. So, uh we're just going to run with it here. I just need to get sighted up on my other side targets here. All right. So we're going to start out zero. All right, so these are all pushed to 2.420. Here we go. All right, now we're gonna go to four. And again, I'm skipping every two because of conservation. If I've done my load development right, my tuner should be in the first, usually below eight. But, you know, sometimes you never know. Oops. I botched that one. It didn't pick up. So, one more here. Okay. Now, yeah, I pulled that one. One, two, three, four, five, four. Okay. It should be on eight. One, two, three. Four, six, seven, eight. Eight, now we go to twelve. twelve. All right, three rounds here. Sixteen.
All right, uh, just doing a really quick tuner test. Thought I'd just throw the video on. You can watch the chrono doing this as well. Um, let's see, where did I like? That was 12, 14, 12, and 16. So we're going to do 15 here. All right, here's 15. Oh. shank that one yeah I pulled it off but uh, that's definitely where it wants to shoot so let's do this one again let me come over so 14 looked great 16 looked great 15 looks amazing if I don't jerk another one Oh, yeah. All right, one more just for fun. Let me push a couple bullets real quick here. And I know I've got a little wiggle room on each side of this tune, so that's good. All right, one more. Here we go. All right, yeah, I'll show you a picture. Uh, anyway, that shows you the chrono. Shows you, you know, playing around with my 22. Shows you playing with my 284. Uh, I am really, really loving this thing. So, uh, anyway, just for fun, here's that final target. I'll give you a little walkthrough of what I was doing today. So, there you go. You get to see the, um, the Andy Scan working uh, on my 284. And again, just to give you some context because of what I was doing, let me just show you what was happening. I did my seating depth test here. Uh, so you can see uh, this was the blow off at, uh, at 2.431. And then I tightened it up to 2.3, then 16, then 12, then 14, and then 20. Uh, I decided to go back in between here and here because this started opening up on me. So uh, I decided to ultimately seat at 2.42. And then you can see what I did was a quick tuner test. So this is just 21 shots, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24. I really liked what was happening between 12 and 16. So I went ahead and did a couple validation shots. You can see 14 looked real good. 12 opened up a little bit, so I knew that was on the, on the back side of where the tuner wanted to be. So then I went up to 16. It shot great. I came back down to see what you know, between 14 and 15, kind of a, a node in there. Uh, this is two shots, and then I jerked this one. I think you heard me on the camera, so I was kind of mad at myself, and I said, okay, let's do another. So I did another uh, three shots on 15, and then another three shots on 15. And ultimately, you know, like for me, this is acceptable. Um, you know, I, I had a feeling this one would have been about the same if I hadn't jerked this shot. But, you know, here's 14, you know, here's 15 and then 16. So I've got a really nice spot on my tuner that I'm feeling really comfortable about. And uh, we'll take it out tomorrow at uh, 600 yards and see what we can do. But the big takeaway here is I know there's been a lot of a lot of people asking about, you know, how the, how the Andy Scan's doing. I just wanted to show you. Um, I got to tell you, I do not miss taking a bigger unit to the range with me. It's one less bag I got to pull out. This thing just fits in my range bag. I am very quickly getting very spoiled with it. So I'm going to keep testing with it. As I um, am able to do more videos, 
that aren't, uh, you know, proprietary, uh, I will definitely keep sharing them with you. I know you're going to ask. I can't tell you when it's coming to the market. I honestly don't know. All I know is he is doing everything he can to get this 100% ready for the market um, as soon as he can. And uh, if I find out anything that I can share, I'll definitely pass it on. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps answer some of your initial questions about how it's working, what I think of it. Uh, but I can 100% tell you that uh, that I'm in love with it. So there you go. Uh, I'll be back with more uh, probably in a couple weeks.